everybody. Welcome back to Project Not So Slow. This is our 190D Ohm 606 Opt drag car. We originally planned to use a 480E, but we started off with what we had. We had a 716 from a Mercedes a C230 compressor that bolts right to us Ohm 606. So we started with that, and now it's time to swap in an automatic. And at the moment, the 480 is out of our budget, and we decided to use a 7226. I had a 7226 out of uh, E300 where we well, burnt E300. That's where we got our backup engine from that's currently in the car. And I heard some people saying some negative things about them, but I had a friend who had a SL55 AMG transmission that had just a couple of tabs on the exterior of the transmission broken and he was willing to give it to me for pretty cheap. The only thing I had to do was swap over the bell housing and the torque converter and a much stronger transmission to handle what the super turbo OM66 can do. We also got an off gear controller for this transmission so we can have the ability to control all little things of the transmission like when the converter locks up, how hard the converter locks up, how hard it shifts, when it shifts. Also like sh the shift firmnesses and line pressure. So we're gonna start off by swapping the necessary parts from the E300 7226 onto the AMG transmission so we can bolt it up to our OM606. So I already took out the bell housing off yesterday and a whole bunch of black oil came out from the AMG transmission. So it looks like whoever had that SL55 really drove it like an AMG. So, but I kind of inspected some of the clutches and it looks okay. It looked a little bit a little bit more worn than the 200,000 mile uh, or over 200,000 mile E300 transmission. It looks like, I guess, someone who drove an AMG and someone who drove, drove a fuel efficient diesel. There's a big difference of how, how long the transmission will last. But it's okay. In the 190, the AMG will work just fine. And if anything, I could always just replace the clutches with fresh clutches. I think, there, I think the amount that's left is more than enough for us to go down the track. So now I just have to swap, swap the pump and this set of clutches over to the bell housing that matches the 606. So that the AMG transmission, the pump, and clutches everything stays with the AMG transmission. So I'm gonna just reuse the AMG gasket for now. I mean, I hope it's I hope it's okay, but if not, I'll replace it later. I just forgot to order one. I'm just gonna clean it up, make sure there's no dust in it, and reassemble it. So there we have an AMG 7226 with a bell housing that matches the OM606. I know I didn't do everything perfectly, but I don't need this transmission to go 100,000 miles. I just needed to get it down the track a few times. And if there is an issue, pull it out, fix it, throw it back in. Um, it's basically for a race car. It doesn't need to be perfect. So now I just need to get some fluid for it. 
fill the converter. I'm using the stock E300 converter. I'm pretty sure this one, this one is in good condition because the E300 transmission inside, the clutches all look actually really good. Like really good and the, and the fluid was pretty pretty decent for the amount of miles the transmission had. So I'm pretty sure the converter is in good shape. So we're just gonna use that, put in some nice fresh fluid, new filters and see what happens. All right, what we got here, the engine is in-ish. What's happening is the 726 is much larger than the 716? Yep. Oh, the automatic is much larger than the manual, so the trans tunnel is not, uh, not, it's too big. So we're gonna have to cut the trans tunnel on one side in order to fit, fit the transmission in so that it's nice and straight along the car. So we have currently a laser set up to measure the height, but as you can see here, uh, it's touching against the mounting rail. Custom drive shaft in the making. Homemade lathe. In order to slip this in. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Put it on the press. That's it. You just heat it up, slide it in. These are the conditions that 700 plus horsepower drive shafts are made in. So once we put the engine into its place, the transmission actually fit perfectly without us needing to modify anything anymore. So now it's time to connect it. Um, sporting our boys at Black Smoke Racing. Got the OF, OF uh, gear controller. Took this out of the box, scared me at first. I was like, Daniel, let's put the manual back in. Yeah, I, we were planning on running no wiring. And then now there's this... Um, life support it's actually not as complicated as it looks once i look through it it's it's actually not that complicated you only have like a power ground then you have your connection to the transmission throttle position sensor that got me a little bit nervous and then boost that's all you really need to get started there is a speed sensor but an external one but you can still use the one that's inside the transmission so i just zip tied it so it's out of the way and then the throttle position sensor, I was a little bit nervous. I'm like, where am I gonna put that? Yeah, it was, uh, at first I was getting scared too because I was gonna have to like try to find somewhere under the hood, try to figure out with the throttle, especially because of the TPS that we had, it would like move half of what the throttle would move. Yeah, Daniel, show them what you did. So, I like it. Now it's mounted inside actually. This is some Mercedes one found at a junkyard. Uh, it's just mounted to the body and now it's connected to the throttle pedal here because I guess this this lever moves much less than the that top one so we'll find out if this is a good place or not um it was really quick and easy to install it here and one nice thing about it also is we were able to move it up and down here to get the correct throw so that the whole throttle position sensor gets used I don't, i'm not sure if that's important but anyways the whole throttle position sensor now is it's completely a little too tight so now we're going to find a nice spot to mount the, the module and connect the boost sensor, connect the transmission, connect the throttle position sensor now that we have one. And I think that that's about it. Not as complicated as I thought it was gonna be. So let's start wiring. Daniel got everything connected with that computer. Um, uh, <clears throat> nice placement, bro. Um, no, it's just temporary. Yeah, it's temporary just to make sure everything works. I have the TPS connected down here uh, with our custom backup system. I have the boost sensor connected uh, on the way to the boost controller, which is right here. I have the wire connected to the shifter, which is just this basically connects right into the stock area. Then I have the monitor and joystick setup, the two ethernet cables that go around through behind the dash and down to the controller. And then the, the 12 volt goes to the accessory switch and then the ground goes to ground. And that's really it. There's nothing else connected. Uh, well, there's only two other things really to connect, which is an external speed sensor and then the paddle shifters. But I didn't set up the paddle shifters yet because 
Got to make sure everything works first. So yeah, Daniel, let's... show us this uh, throttle uh, position sensor in action. So uh, it, you push and it pulls. Beautiful. Okay, so the instructions. What do they say? They say that you need to. So it says connect everything. Without starting the train engine. Yeah. So first it says connect everything, and then it says power on, but do not start engine. So this button right here. Send it. Oh, some. Ooh, look at that. You're in neutral. How neutral. do they know? How do they know? How do they know? Oh, this thing turned on. Actually, it's oh, cool. Wow. Lights turned on. Anyway, now it says press joystick down to set up. Uh, set up parameters. Press joystick down until set up TPS. Okay. Right and press joystick right, I'm assuming. Press joystick right to enter this menu. Okay. Now with. 0%. In TPS, press joystick up. Okay. Okay. Okay, press joystick up. Then press throttle to 100%. And press joystick down. So. Yeah. yeah. I think that, yeah. So now it knows. Put W into S position and do point 0.1 through 8 again. Okay, press S. Okay. It completely is a different. That's so cool. So we're nice. going to set up. So now that we have W and S. So a W has its own programming. And S has its own program. So you can completely sw switch the tuning in the transmission. So we're going to have one for the racetrack and yeah. one for the street drive. Basically, so the racetrack one will just be so you can only shift like yourself. It won't shift by itself until you shift it. And it'll be having like the lockup coming on basically like 100% lockup in all the gears that it can do lockup. And then the street driving will just probably be like lock up in the higher gears. Just so it's like And then driving. it could just be in slow lock up instead of the full hundred percent lock up. No, it, it what's it called? So the shifting you would have less pressure during the shifts. Yeah. So it's not so like it's not a harsh you. shift, yeah. yeah. But on the track you wanna let it shift. Sweet. Now press joystick right one more time. So you time. basically just have to do what you just did. Okay. So zero. First. Oh, did you do zero already? No, I did not. So zero right now? Yeah, what is that? Up? Up. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So now, well now what do you do? Oh, now press joystick right one more time. Uh, and you get a page called Aggressiveness TPS. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you have standard OM603 and you have around 60 TPS while cruising, then set to slow. If you have a diesel mechan pump, set to aggressive. We have diesel mechan. No, no. <laughs> oh, if it's debug, they're extremely aggressive. <laughs> so after setting all that up, I decided to set up the sh paddle shifters. Um, I designed and printed some paddle shifters uh, that work. Also installed some bungee cord for the nitrous button as well. So now that I have the paddles on, it just second gear and then downshift. So. It's pretty simple. The design is not that confusing. It's mainly just a clamp with two little mounts on the sides and then the paddles connected in. Uh, and then the wiring actually to the controller, it's one singular wire with three different resistors. Uh, one resistor goes to the horn, which is not connected currently, it's just uh, capped off over here. And then the other two have different resistances for upshifting and downshifting. It didn't say which one goes where, so I just tested which one. I grabbed the switch and then just clicked it to see if it would either go up or down, or if it would do anything at all. So now it works well. You just toss it on the steering wheel, and then upshift, and then downshift. I approve this message.
unless it starts whistling really like a nice deep whistle. Let's go for love. First fill up, uh, car is driving perfectly so far. Transmission's shifting great. Gotta get some diesel in it. So far, everything's working perfectly. The paddle shifters are working. Even in auto, it shifts very well. So this thing is running great. So after this test drive, pretty excited about what's going to happen. We're planning to take this thing to the racetrack now. The paddle shifting, actually quite impressed. I thought it might be a little bit laggy since it's a quite a little bit of the older transmission, but it was pretty crisp, pretty on point and really let you know it's in gear, which I actually like. So far, the temperature of the transmission is doing good. This little computer here, quite surprising, shows a lot of data. You could see in some of the videos really impressive shows the engine rpm transmission temperature gear speed so now we're just going to do some fine tuning we're going to take it to the track and see what it does under boost and see if we need to adjust anything so that gives us an awesome opportunity to make sure we can get the car down the track as fast as possible thanks for watching god bless you guys god bless america and have a good rest of your day